All right, guys. So in the previous video, <clears throat> we said that uh, we're going to assume it's in static equilibrium. And then we proved that it wasn't, which is what we're trying to do. Okay. So we know that it's in... Um, that it's moving, okay? So we're gonna have to use uh, kinetic friction for this for the rest of the problem, all right? So like this should be. So I've already erased a few things. So now we need kinetic friction. F K, and it's not equal to zero anymore. It's equal. So this is not zero. It's not zero anymore. It's equal to mass times acceleration in the X for A. Sorry. Okay. And then this one, it's not equal to zero anymore. It's equal to mass times, or mass of B times acceleration of B. Okay, and this is where this comes in handy, this equation. So we can relate the acceleration of A to the acceleration of B. So we know that if, if A is negative, which means it's going to the left, AB is going to be positive. And moving upwards, which makes sense. If you pull it, this to the left, B is gonna go up, or A to the left, B is gonna go up. Okay. So let's go back and uh, calculate the kinetic friction now. Kinetic friction is mu k, so 0.2 times the normal. The normal stays the same, 294. Three. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is find the tension because these two equations will allow me to find the tension. Okay. Once I have my tension, now I'm going to know the force that's uh, doing work on B and then I'm going to apply this uh, work energy theorem. Okay. So 0.2 times 294.3. So this is 58. 0.86 newtons. Okay. And so let's see this equation. Uh, let's write it in terms of tension. Or let's write it in terms of a b. So it's going to be three times t minus twenty five times nine point eight one. Minus 245.25, okay, uh, divided by the mass of B, which is 25, equals AB, okay, and then we can rewrite our equation, our X equation, right here, one in red over here. I highlighted. Let's write it down here. Let's make some room. So it's going to be minus 250 uh, plus T uh, plus plus T plus FK, which we said was 58.86, all divided by the mass of A which is 30. Alright, so one way we can do it is just, uh, oh yeah, and this is equal to a, a. So we can just plug this equation and this equation into our acceleration relationship over here. Okay. And then that gives us, let's try, okay, okay so it's going to be minus 250 plus T plus 58.86 divided by 30 equals uh, minus, oh, sorry, minus three, yeah, minus three times AB. So three T minus 245. 0.25 divided by 25. Okay, so doing this equation out here, 
we should get that the tension is equal to okay that gives me 91 point zero newtons for the tension okay great and then so now that we have the tension okay now we can just apply the work energy theorem to our uh, system B so the uh, B as it moves up okay all right guys now to finish off um, so I kind of did part B first and I'm doing uh, part A okay so now applying the uh, work energy theorem okay let's start off with looking at the uh, free body diagram of block B over here we know block B had these three tensions okay well let's rewrite them all let's just rewrite it like this um, 3t wow that's a straight line 3t all right so there are only two forces acting on this are three tensions or I guess four forces but okay three tensions and then our weight okay weight of B so now they tell us that it starts from rest okay so then T1 kinetic energy which is one half and B C B squared initial right we know that all that's zero because the velocity is zero so this term is zero so the whole thing is zero T2 that's what we want that's where we're gonna calculate the velocity of B final one half and B it's gonna put BF squared okay we're looking for this after so we're looking for the velocity final after uh, a has moved two meters so if we know a has moved two meters right from this equation we know that y b let's just talk magnitudes here so y b is whatever a moves divided by three Okay, so if A moves two meters, okay, so two, and then uh, YB is going to move up two thirds of a meter. Okay, nice. Now let's look at uh, this middle term over here, the networks, or I guess all the other terms contributing to the network. So from this book, we know we have there's a change in elevation okay so if there's a change in elevation there's a gravitational potential associated with it oops the there's the minus w delta y all right so it's going to be uh what's the weight of b we said that's 20, okay 25 times 9.81 So it's 245.25, okay, times the change in height. So it goes from, let's, you know, it goes from, let's say, zero to two thirds, okay. So it's going to be. minus zero so if you're going up weight's gonna act on it right I mean sorry the, the gravity is gonna do work on it so you're gonna lose some energy to that okay and then uh, so okay we have the gravity term and now we have the network contributed by the, the three tensions which is very similar but I like to write it like this uh, F times distance and then cosine theta 
So all the, all, all the non-conservative forces, okay, I usually write like this, okay? So in this case, I have the 3t as my f, okay? The displacement d is, again, 2 thirds. It's positive because I'm going up. And now, my forces are going this direction. My displacement is going in this direction, okay? What's the angle between this? Well, you should, you should think 0. So this cosine uh, 0 is just 1. So this is just like this. So then 3s go away, and then you have 2t. Okay, and now I have all the terms to just plug it in, into the work energy theorem. Okay, let's do this right in the middle. And let's change colors to yellow. So let's do, okay, T1 is 0. Plus, sum up all the U12s. So we have, uh, okay, minus 245.25 times 2. Okay. Okay, plus or minus 163.5 plus 2t, which is 2 times 91. Okay, and that's equal to uh, t2, 1 half, 25. Vf squared. Nice. Okay, so we're almost there. 163.5 plus 2 times 91. Got it. Times 2 divided by 25. Take the square root of that. And then you get velocity of B after it has moved two meters, it's 1.2, uh, let's say 1.22 meters per second, okay? And that's your final answer. So notice here they didn't give you a time or anything like that. So usually when they don't give you times or not enough information to do a kinematic problem, okay, you want to think conservation of energy, okay? Uh, all right, guys, we finally finished this problem. I know it's kind of long. It's, you know, each of these takes around like 20, 25 minutes to solve. All right, so I hope this video helps to help you also speed up the process as you do more of these problems. Take it easy, guys. And don't forget to ask me questions down below or, you know, um, give me a thumbs up.